This is my question, and these are my institution. So, so I, would, I would bring some controversies, and I'll show you some kind of exciting thing, at least what is in our lab. I'm not sure whether it will be exciting for your lab, or for your years, but here I am. So if I know how to change this, do I know? I'm the only one who does it. OK, here. So this is my duality of interest, so being different from David and John. Uh, nobody wants to touch me. I have some grants, so, but these are just to show off. So these are not real conflict of interest. I go in the, in the countries of rising sun, and they ask me a few questions there in Japan and Korea. And I have patent on one of the fibers that I will probably, during my talk, glorify the most. So you just take half a message. And this talk is on the bottom. You can see it represent my opinion and not my institution. Uh, so I still kept about 100 slides, and over the next 45 minutes, I'll talk about a number of things. And, uh, and, and you know, there would be fiber health, one, two slides, uh, brief, very brief history. Uh, and then I'll talk more about quantity and, and, and rheology. And then I, I don't know what I, what I managed to keep, because Livia was uh, taking from my hands a lot of slides. So I'll talk about some well-known new fiber. You tell Livia what you left, I don't know. Uh, and then old fiber in new, uh, some kind of magic. And then I'll bring some grip, because that's what I was supposed only to talk about, how to use GI to reduce glycemia or low GI. And maybe mention food mat matrix, old, old, young, and whatever, I'm old. And then I will, I will show studies like glycemia, appetite, uh, diabetes, LDL, and laxation was taken away from Livia because it's smelly topic, although I, I love it, yeah. Uh, so these are recommendations. We all agree that we should eat a lot of fiber, 25, 38. Uh, we, working with David, we disagree. We would do studies. His legendary study with uh, insoluble soluble was about uh, 65, I think, grams. David study, uh, New England Journal of Medicine, and a lot of this. And there are many health benefits. FDA have fingers in this. So uh, health benefits for oat and barley means better glucan. Uh, psyllium is one of the stars. Something new is flux. We just compared uh, uh, our salva chia with flux. We, we saw some benefits of that snacks and with bran. So anyway, uh, fiber is good for you, but which fiber? So this guy really doesn't know that's me, I guess. So there is a lot of uh, work, research of uh, uh, dietary fiber area. And uh, somebody said this is the longest, the, the, the largest number of studies in, in history of medicine. Um, until now, we have this big uh, Professor Sachs and all these then GI. So soon, GI will be the biggest uh, study. But started very early in 53, uh, introduced this wheat brand. So Kellogg, brother, one doctor, other businessman, little corn, then pectin for citrus, guar gum. Again, I mentioned David three times. I'll mention it seven times more, and then I'll stop. So there is a lot of studies in England. They did in Oxford. Some pea fiber, oats, huge thing, oats, beta-glucan, barley, I didn't put, then psyllium, uh, and, then, and then new kind of industry love story, false inulin. We just hope it will do a little study with Inuli. If you get free, we don't have money for this. And then it's now more, more kind of extract of beta-glucan, and in our hands are uh, fiber blend. The only problem, it is my knowledge, in this time, uh, I was just born. Uh, there was not much knowledge on fiber. We didn't, I, in, at least we didn't uh, advance too much. We had to learn more, more, uh, more about it. Uh, I apologize for those producing oats, but I call this all fibers because this is the first one showing effect on LDL. And meta-analysis, uh, uh, you know, Brown meta-analysis done in, uh, I think she included the only study until 1993. And these are 10 sitting there, my student. We did meta-analysis, uh, putting all, all new studies here. You can't read, I cannot read, but these are all updated just from last week, 2015. Unpublished, you will find the four grams of beta-glucan reduce LDL for glorious point one, and this is ironic, you hear my change in my voice, in normal uh, uh, cholesterolemic, when we did in hyper, uh, hypercholesterol, high cholesterol was a little better point two. So this is, this is good for, uh, for government and for reducing cardiovascular disease. I'm not sure whether it's good for individual. Um, 
So I have to mention solidarity. Tom, I didn't kick out your slide, glorious study with Jenny and other uh, big laboratories where they, they study 370 people, put them in five groups, control, and four viscosity levels. Two, uh, these are molecular weight, these are viscosity indication, two million A50. I think two million is odd uh, when you bring from the field, not from Canada, because they say field, field if it's cold, they don't produce good oats and not high viscosity. So south of the border, I guess. Um, 850, 530, and this is the outcome. He found all the kind of uh, correlation a reduction in LDL uh, with this, uh, only low viscosity. Uh, these are the same quantity. Actually, it was four, three grams. Uh, you can see on, on the side, uh, found reduction. In conclusion, that the LDL is function of molecular weight of viscosity. So I believe I agree with him. Uh, uh, this is when it's in hands of Tom and, and Jenny and other. But when you look at some of the study that we selected earlier, when we start to look into this, Studies, they are comparable in design, very similar, a similar number of people at, at the time in, in pretty good journals. You can see different quantity of uh, old beta-glucan, and you would think that if you give more beta-glucan reduction of LDL will be, will be higher. However, that was not the case. When, it, when they give six grams or three grams, there was significant reduction. When they did 10, 10 grams, it wasn't significant uh, 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 reduction. So at the time, that was many years ago, we start to believe that it's all not only quantity, but it's also rheological properties, viscosity, molecular weight, solubility in small intestine. Uh, hydration time, we look at gel and all these, get the molecule, uh, particle size. Olivia is working on one project with us on particle size, et cetera. So we start believing that these are very important. Uh, one of the legendary study, uh, this is again David Jenkins, number five, I think I mentioned David. Uh, you can see there he studied he study six fiber, guar, uh, trilocan gum, pectin, um, metacellulose, bran, and, and, and some drug. And upper panel, you will have always blood glucose and lower insulin. And, and he measured viscosity. That was very early. One of the, I must give credit if I may, in 1978, when, when they look at uh, British Medical Journal, they look at viscosity because a lot of research is done by fiber but they neglected the basic principle of polysaccharide, which is a rheology, and he didn't. And it's wonderful, that's legendary study, if I may call. Uh, and then another legendary, Peter Wood, we always mention Peter Wood, where he would give old beta-glucan, two grams, three, six, seven, 14, and he would say, uh, uh, find correlation between log viscosity, glucose peak lowering, you can't, and not to mention this study, great study, Tom also was working with him. Uh, so, I'll show you now our, our legendary study in our group. Nobody cares, but I'll show you some magic. So what we did, we used very simple Brookfield uh, viscometer here, few shear rate, etc. And then, then we said how much of the, of the fiber we will need to put to have the same viscosity level. So we would need to put, and I'll tell you more about viscous fiber blend, which is conjunct santan in this case. We needed two grams to have the same viscosity. This is showing blood glucose. 3.5 grams xanthan gum and about 6 grams psyllium to match viscosity in vitro. When we did postprandial glycemia, you can see, you can really see how in 12 people, area under the curve incremental uh, match uh, around 110 area under the curve, uh, which is in our, our way, uh, we think that's how we kind of proving that viscosity is important, but you need different quantity of, uh, in this case, different fiber. Uh, some, some old new fibers, are people, people start uh, doing concentrated beta-glucan more and more. We uh, did study uh, with new technology. They, they use uh, water to remove starch, a fiber called risk of fiber. So what's the problem with, with uh, beta-glucan uh, and eating oats is that if you want to reduce LDL, uh, you would need to eat oat bran. You will need 30 grams. That's about three balls. And, and it's two grams. If you want to do more, six, you need more. To, for four grams, you need more oatmeal because people eat oatmeal. They don't eat oat bran so much. And if you want to reduce 10%, this is how many you need. So a lot. The problem is these days is, is this, that we ingest a lot of calories. So oats, if you, if you, don't, if you don't like oat uh, bran, but you eat oatmeal, like, like most of the people in these American hotels where I go to, 
uh, then you have to risk on many calories and that's not good. So what people were doing, and this is study we did, this is oat flour, you can see these are structured and these are, these are starch in between. So they remove the starch and they keep structure and they preserve, they say beta glucan viscosity in native form. Uh, we did actually study compare uh, postprandial glycemia before we embark on, on larger study. Uh, we did long-term study, but I'm not going to show you. They are not published because I don't have time. But we, we look what this uh, oats and barley uh, uh, concentrate can do when you put in food. So the study was postprandial glycemia, looking at zero, zero oats means uh, just, just uh, uh, control, uh, control food, two grams, four and eight. 0, 2, 4, and 8 barley, so beta-glucan, 50% uh, beta-glucan concentrate, and 60% uh, beta-glucan uh, uh, concentrate in, in, in uh, ba barley, and three times white bread. So when we did in liquid, when we would add on the bottom, we have 0 on the left side, 2 grams, 4, and 8. You can see how blood glucose, this incremental area on the curve, are being reduced. But the only really significant is eight grams. So basically, we would give 16 grams of some terribly tasting food uh, mixed in liquid and some orange juice or whatever it was. And that was significant. When we, we did barley, barley did less reduce postprandial glycemia less. So it was not bad. The liquid was good. When we put in bars, you can see on the right side, this is white bread. We did white bread just, I don't know, we, we just did it. Actually, this amino white bread. But we also did, uh, first bar on the left is barley zero, and this bar, first red, is odd zero. So we make the identical bar, and then we will give 1.5 grams, three and six, of oats and barley and oats. And you can see there is no effect whatsoever when you compare to control bar. Most of the people will do kind of white bread and will make bar, and they will say, you see how it's working, but it's other ingredients. So that's, that's not uh, very good. So how one can uh, make uh, one gram more, I'll show you some magic. Actually, I'll show you two magic that we do in, in lab with fiber. One is how to maximize effect of, of psyllium, and then I'll introduce viscous fiber blend that we worked for the last 10, 15 years. So the psyllium story is that one of the a large company came to us and say, when we put psyllium in bars, so when psyllium became popular 10 years ago, whenever, uh, uh, we put in the bar. Bar is wonderful for a week, but after one, two, three, four weeks, the shelf life, you need uh, long shelf life in order to put on market. Then become drying and they become terrible. So we thought uh, that maybe coils, if you imagine fiber as a, as a coils, polysaccharide coils are not completely released. And then, and then when product is made, there are some still moisture, then these coils still continue being, being released and they, they capture moisture and make product dry. So what we did, uh, we actually, I'll explain to you, these are again area of the curve, in terms of time, I don't have much time. So these are zero psyllium, these are two glucose drinks. And then we'll uh, dark bar at three grams, just we mix in the, in the glucose drink, psyllium three grams, six grams psyllium, and nine grams. So the more psyllium we add, the better. And then we did what I, what I exaggerated over a little magic, we would uh, actually uh, cook, uh, uh, cook basically uh, uh, psyllium in the, in the glucose drink, uh, use uh, some mechanical energy and aeration, and you can see that basically treated the same quantity is lower, 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 and we concluded that basically three grams of untreated, uh, uh, treated uh, psyllium have effect of nine gram untreated psyllium. So you can actually pump up psyllium, but you don't know how to do, I mean, uh, the practical, and we found correlation with 25 and 50 grams glucose, we did uh, both. We found correlation with low viscosity, actually firmness. The problem is it's not practical. So these are good findings, but lacking practical application unless you eat and then, and then you are being cooked. <laughs> so basically another, another kind of induced viscosity. Induced means that, that uh, we try to produce viscosity which is higher than uh, natural material. So another one is this, when we mix complementary fiber, conjac, xanthan, gum, they mix uh, side bones. We started this study looking at the different in vitro viscosity measurement using Brookfield simple method. And we will use kappa, carrageenan, psyllium, xanthan, guar, gum, conjac, that uh, our group is very keen. And then we'll use conjac to blend with some other fiber, in this case with xanthan, this 
uh, this is level of in vitro viscosity of one gram of this material. You can see when you, when you mix uh, uh, conjac and xanthan, you can actually almost double, double viscosity. When we look in vitro, we actually found that this uh, is replicated. These are conjac and viscous fiber blend. You have the lowest postprandial glycemia, which uh, we then use in many other studies. So what is happening? Fiber, uh, in this case, this blend, this heteroscopy goes in the stomachal liquid, and then rapture at certain point of time, release these coils, and in this case, we, we use three, three ones. Uh, Jenny actually uh, studied PGX, that's kind of PGX concept that they was taken from us, I'll tell you in a minute. And these are three fibers, and what is actually happening is that these three fibers actually, eventually gastrointestinal tract also is, is uh, linked with the side bones and capture actually nutrients and, and the slow absorption small intestine. So uh, then we compare this uh, viscous fiber blend, PGX is commercial name, and not beta glucan in, in one of the studies. Actually, that was done by Alexandra Jenkins, who published this uh, 10 years ago or something more, where, where she introduced concept of GRIP. So she looked at number of studies. I'm sorry for this small letter, but there's a number of studies. How much they reduce by adding certain quantity of beta glucan. And, they, and, and she found that per gram of uh, beta glucan, Glycemic, glycemic index will be reduced for about four units. So that was with old brand, and, and I think this study was heavily cited. I must, I must tell Alexandra, that's more than some of our diabetes care papers. Then, then she did one in the glycemic index laboratory study where she incorporated, again, five grams of viscous fiber blend. Question is how much this will uh, affect. You can see cornflakes reduce about, I can't read, 30, 40 percent and then rice uh, high, and then TV dinner, and yogurt, so the, 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 the lower glycemic index, the less effect, but it's always effect by adding, you can reduce uh, postprandial glycemia or actually glycemic index. And then she came up with this grip, so glycemic index reduction potential, I think we call this, a concept where she showed that beta-glucan reduced postprandial glycemia for four units and one gram of uh, viscous fiber blend for seven, so it's more powerful, more viscous. We did a couple of studies in, uh, with conjugate fiber blend. Furio Briganti was in Vidaski, brought us to Italy uh, with Mar Maurizio Acri, you remember Furio, who did wonderful cookies, biscuits for us, and we did again study uh, with biscuits and found that glycemic index of biscuits was um, in, in uh, normal, was, it was something like 25 in diabetic, 35 with 10 grams of fiber, which is incredible on, on white bread scale. And based on this, we calculated actually how much, how many cookies we'll need to know. And just as, as Frank Sarge did study, we managed to, in different way, with adding these biscuits with conjugate blend, we, uh, we had difference in GI of 23 units, and we knew we are going to get, once you have about 20, I think you're in business. So we did this study, we actually did two studies, one in diabetic, one in metabolic syndrome, and you get in lipids, I'm showing all my lipids, glucose was also good, uh, showing cholesterol red, this is uh, fiber blend, this is wheat bran, match fiber, obviously is more study, LDLs, uh, LDLs reduced, but this reduction is beyond medication, so people where, uh, where David remembered, that was his patient, were on, on uh, lower statin, I think, at the time, uh, early, early, uh, so reduction was about uh, about 17% uh, or something over control, something like huge, huge reduction beyond medication we kept on. And then also, uh, I think ApoB and, and so particular. We compared them with, uh, with uh, Brown from Harvard, uh, her meta-analysis, psyllium, oats, guar gum, pectin, and this conjugate blend. You can see reduction per gram was the highest with conjugate blend with other. So telling about viscosity with the same quantity. This is again the Furio Briganti is there smiling. This is first function of food in Europe, if I may call, about 100 years ago when they used our, our findings. And these cookies are still sold in Italy uh, by Dico Farm, uh, as, and, and it costs probably 10, 15 euros, 10 cookies, and people buy all the time. Uh, PGX is also a big seller in Canada, US. Costco sold 20 million bottles in 2011. And you see this little bag. So I, maybe uh, next week in court, they took this patent from me. That's my patent. I never got one penny. Uh, and, and they say, if you have money, sue us. I don't have money. 
unless they pay me, leave, you will pay me for lecture, I hope, no? So I may have money. Uh, so basically, that's, that's wonderful people buying for weight loss or something, I don't know what, but I have a pocket. That's me eating fiber, being constipated. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't show relaxation. So we did also an appetite study. That's interesting also to see viscosity. So we had three, three drinks as a, as a preload. You know how you do uh, appetite study. Konjac blend. This is our konjac santan. Konjac lawn, the same, but the same quantity. The same konjac glucomano in Japanese uh, root. And cellulose, the same quantity of this low, high, medium viscosity. When we measure viscosity, you can see three level one down, middle, and the viscosity on the top. And findings are that they eat uh, uh, ad libitum pizza more um, between cellulose and blend, but not conjunct. So that's kind of, and they make big deal, this good looking woman there, an uh, ugly man here, and they sell this uh, big way. So then we did, and this is one of the last, Olivia, can I show the last 37 slides? Uh, so basically, I, I, we, did, we did low, high, medium, or lipid lowering long term study. Uh, and we uh, have 24 people cross over normal epidemic, give them typical North American diet, 35 grams of fat or more, three arms, three weeks cross over, and we'll give them uh, low viscous wheat bran. We, we kind of cheating this wheat bran, probably have little viscosity. 15 grams, medium viscosity, cereal 15 in breakfast cereals, and, and conjugate blood 15. These are the results. Uh, this panel on the left is total cholesterol. Mid, uh, middle is uh, total to uh, HDL ratio. At the time, that was popular ratio. Uh, and this was also ratio. It was the same. I don't know. I can't see this. But you can see that basically low viscosity brain that they managed to eat 14 grams didn't do much. Psyllium, which everybody claimed, including FDA, that does miracles, didn't do in three weeks. Uh, went down and went up. Uh, and then, and then viscous fiber, they couldn't eat, was too viscous. So they eat six grams, but managed to reduce total cholesterol and LDL pretty well. So the same quantity, just uh, different viscosity. So fiber and health, yes, to explore. Everything is relative, one guy said before. Uh, I don't know, for fiber or something else. Uh, uh, you know, this is the most popular uh, photograph in the history of, of, of photography. They're all eating fiber. You see, number of hours that we study. So that's good, so we will increase consumption of fiber. And this is my high fiber group research team, and, and thank you very much. I want to ask the industry, perhaps, here, um, is there interest on, uh, on, on fibers of this kind with high viscosity? Uh, like conjac, where I think the effect was five. These are on these are kind grams. of supplement. These are you know we decided to study supplement. We we can't persuade our patient to eat high fiber diet. We, you need to be very charming to do and this, which I'm not. Uh, uh, five grams you can do miraculous things basically to exaggerate, if I may. It okay, could be, but you know you need you need some magic to put in products. And and I, I we, interesting we put less fiber. In this study, we have less effect, although it was higher viscosity. So that's the, that's the good thing, that you need less fiber. It may be easier to put in the, in the product. Furio, uh, he's, Furio, don't check your phone. I'm talking to you. <laughs> so so Furio, Furio, Furio and us did in Italy this uh, cookies, biscuits, in the way that uh, people very smart in industry, uh, very tasty biscuit. They, they actually took... I think palm oil, when I said to David Jenkins, he didn't want to be on paper with us. Uh, and actually took fiber and mixed with the, with the oil and then put it in, in the biscuit. It was a little crunchy, you, you remember, but it worked fantastically well. Then Alexandra did study with us in our lab that she would show when you put in margarine fiber, the same one that works the best compared to capsules and compared to incorporating bread and elsewhere. So there is a trick, but the industry, industry is slow. I mean, there is only few studies uh, uh, in conjunct glucomannan. I don't know why people don't study this, uh, because they, they actually industry don't pay. And I did this on, I don't know, stealing money or something. I don't know how we did it. <laughs> <laughs>